Hello there. I'm Keo Cerrone Beatmaker. And welcome to Lounge Ronin. All things, everything. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And on this episode, we're going to discuss spontaneous human combustion. Let's get into it. This article was updated and written by Brian Hill, October 15th, 2020. Spontaneous Human Combustion, a Burning Mystery. For some time now, people have debated whether or not human beings could spontaneously combust or burst into flames without an external heat source. However, over the past 300 years, there have been more than 200 reports of such incidents occurring. This phenomenon is called spontaneous human combustion, or SHC. It occurs when a person supposedly burns to death by a fire believed to have started from within the body of that person. Of the hundreds of accounts on record, there seems to be a similar pattern. A solitary victim is often consumed by flame, usually inside his or her home. However, the extremities such as hands, feet, or parts of the leg often remain, are often remaining intact. The torso and the head are charred beyond recognition and in rare cases, the internal organs of the victim remain unscathed. The room the victim uh, was in usually shows little to no signs of life, aside from a greasy residue left or furniture and walls. Often there is a sweet, smoky smell in the room where the incident has occurred. Kinky. Historic Cases of Spontaneous Human Combustion The story of SHC can be traced back to medieval literature, and some even believe there are several passages in the Bible making reference to it. In 1641, the Danish physician Thomas Bartholian, 1616-1680, described the death of Polinus Vorsitius in his book, Historium Animacrium Rerium, a collection of strange medieval phenomena. Oh man, I would love to get that book. Vorsitius was an Italian knight who, while at his home in Milan, Italy, in 1470, drank some strong wine and started vomiting flames before bursting into fire. This is considered to be the first recorded account of spontaneous combustion in human history. Here we have an illustration of a person spontaneously combusting. In 1673, French author Jonas Dupont published a book entitled De Incendies Corpus Humani Spontaneus, which is a collection of cases and studies on the subject of spontaneous human combustion. 
One famous incident from France dates back to 1725, where a Parisian innkeeper was awoken by the smell of smoke and discovered that his wife, Nicole Millet, had been reduced to ashes while laying on a straw pallet, which itself had been untouched by the flames. All that remained of Madame Millet, a chronic alcoholic, was her skull, a few bones from her back and lower legs. Wooden items found around were undamaged. Her husband was charged with murder and initially found guilty. Man, that's wild. Could you imagine being in that scenario? You waking up and your wife just pretty much just is, is ash and bone. Man. On appeal, however, the judges agreed with his defense of spontaneous human combustion, thanks in part to the testimony of a surgeon named Dr. Claude Nicolas Lecat. Lecat was at the inn when the smell of smoke awoke the house and Nicole's body was discovered. Her death was later declared to be the consequence of a visitation of God. Oh boy. Spontaneous human combustion became popularized in the 19th century after famous English author Charles Dickinson used it to kill off one of his characters in the novel Bleak House. When critics accused Dickinson of trying to validate something that didn't exist, he simply pointed to the existing research showing 30 historical cases at the time. Here we have an illustration of spontaneous human combustion in the case of Bleak House by Charles Dickinson. One thing that kind of gets, when I think about spontaneous um, human combustion, I don't know why, but I always kind of like think to think back to like, almost as if, we, if we're living in a, a program, it's almost as if there is a bug or a glitch. Either with the person or with the matrix, however you want to call it. Uh, just something that's kind of been popping through my mind as I've been reading this is like the idea of glitches in our reality. I'm sure people have seen some of those strange videos of Planes freezing, you know, birds kind of floating and freezing in the air, you know, people acting in a very bizarre manner, almost seems like they're acting like a, a, a you know, a computer program. Uh, so, you know, things like this kind of make me wonder about that. As if this is some kind of bug in the system and it's, it's such a small, you know, randomized bug that maybe... <laughs> Uh, you know, our um, our geeks up in the sky above can't seem to nab this one down. <laughs> but I digress. Let us continue. And please, leave a comment on your thoughts of my little speculation. And make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Common Characteristics of Spontaneous Human Combustion Victims The topic of SHC received coverage in the British Medical Journal in 1938 when an article by L.A. Perry cited a book published in 1823 called Medical Jurisprudence. It stated that cases of spontaneous human combustion shared several common themes including the victims were chronic alcoholics, they were usually elderly females. The body had burned spontaneously, but some lightened substance had, some, had also come into contact with it. The hands and feet usually fell off. The fire had caused very little damage uh, to many other combustible things in contact with the body. The combustion of the body was left, uh, has left a residue of greasy and fitted ashes. 
very offensive in odor. Alcoholism seems to have played a heavy role in earlier references to SHC, partially because of some Victorian era physicians and writers believed spontaneous human combustion was caused by it. I mean, that's a, an interesting idea. But I mean, it still doesn't account for the cases where the organs were completely intact. I mean, you know, if you're an alcoholic, your, your organs are pretty much, you know, sh shot. So, I mean, wouldn't you expect that the organs would be lit on fire as well? I don't know the correlation with elderly women. Not sure about that. Um, but I, I remember listening to an interview with a guy who was really heavily studying spontaneous human combustion. And he talked about an incident with an individual who woke up and like half of his arm was pretty much gone and charred. Uh, he, he was asleep when this happened, um, but he didn't feel anything. I don't know if he was an alcoholic. The, the, um, the investigator didn't say anything about his, uh, his medical history. Uh, so it's entirely possible. Um, but just something that I, I don't know, I'm not really sure about. I wonder, have they studied this greasy residue that's left over after someone experiences SHC? I mean, wouldn't that be able to help kind of like at least get an idea of the cause or, you know, what are the, the chemical makeups of this uh, residue after the fact? I mean, I don't know. I just, the whole alcoholic thing. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what the correlation is there other than that, you know, alcohol can, you know, it's like ethanol, essentially, you can you know, light lights things on fire with it. So I don't know the, I don't know if that's enough of a correlation or a reason to say that it's strictly caused by alcoholism. But clearly, as they said it here, it seems to be more of uh, an idea of the, of the error rather than of the mind. Let's continue. The Wick Effect, a scientific explanation for SHC. There are several theories as to what causes SHC apart from the above mentioned alcoholism. These include flammable body fat, actitone buildup, static electricity, methane, bacteria, stress, and even divine intervention. Stress? Really? Have you seen the state of this world right now? If it was really stress, then this entire planet would be on fire. Okay, come on now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get back to it. <laughs> Enough of a Ronin rant. Here we go. The theory explaining SHC, which is most approved by science, is called the Wick Effect. It likens the body of an SHC victim to a candle. A candle is composed of a wick of the inside surrounded by a wax made of flammable fatty acids. Fire ignites the wick and the fatty wax keeps burning. In the human body, the body fat acts as the flammable substance, while the victim's clothing or hair is the wick. A cigarette might set fire to a person's clothing, then split their skin, releasing subsequaneous fat, which in turn is absorbed into the burned clothing. As the fat melts from the heat, it soaks into the clothing, acting as a wax-like substance to keep the wick burning. The burning continues for as long as there is fuel available. Proponents of this theory say it explains the victim's bodies are destroyed, yet surrounding, surrounding area, surroundings are utterly burned, are barely burned. But how does that, but what about, like, the, you know, pain. I mean, how are these people not aware of the pain of being lit on fire? I mean, I, I would say that would be something to think about. Um, here we have a illustration of the three stages of the Wick theory. Um, spun of it. Okay, so here we have a uh, stage one, the unconscious, the victim's clothing is accidentally ignited by an external heat source. Uh, stage three, over the course of several hours, the heat from the flames melts the body fat and soaks into the clothing, 
This acts like the wick and the candle to keep the clothing burning steadily for a long time. Uh, stage three, the fuel provided uh, by fat subjects the body to intense heat for a long period of time. Eventually, most of the body that is covered by large amounts of fat and uh, burning clothing is destroyed and reduced to ash. But, I mean, okay, they're, they're unconscious, but, like, I mean, if you were to t take a light cigarette and someone was asleep and you suck it in their arm, they're going to wake up. So, I mean, it's... It's very compelling. It it, it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? It has that that sound of making sense. But like, how is a person still not aware that their body is on fire? They're still not explaining the pain receptors. The pain receptors would be going, would be bl blasting. They'd be lit. You know, it's getting hot in here. My body's burning the ash. This is weird. I don't know. You guys, let me know down in the comments what you think. There is more to consider about this phenomenon. Author and biological professor Brian J. Ford offers another explanation for SHC. He says that an, an acetone buildup is likely at the root of this bizarre phenomenon. Quote, when a person is ill, they sometimes naturally produce traces of acetone in the body, and the acetone is highly inflammable. I experimented with the scale model humans using pig flesh that had been marinated in acetone. They burn like incendiary bombs. Alcoholism can cause people to produce acetone, as can many diseases. My conclusion is that an unwell individual produces high levels of acetone which accumulates in the fatty tissues and can be ignited, perhaps by a static spark or a cigarette. I don't know. I'm I'm not buying it. Still not buying it. Not I'm still not convinced. Something that should be taken into consideration is the fact that cases of SHC almost always occur indoors in lone humans and often near sources of heat. For example, there are almost no known instances of spontaneous human combustion happening in the middle of the street. Another point to consider is that the phenomenon seems to happen to humans. There are no known reported cases of animals suddenly catching fire. Yeah, well, they don't have the amount of, they don't have the same amount of stress that we have. If that's one of the supposed theories, stress, if that was the case, and we'd all be on fire right now. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. Also, the wick effect doesn't seem to fully explain why the victims remain motionless during the episode of combo uh, combustion and burning. Nor does it provide enough explanation why surrounding furniture is often unaffected by the fire or the fact that people are not reacting to it. We, we still haven't gotten to that part. Furthermore, believers in SHC point to the fact that the human body has to reach a temperature of roughly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,648 degrees Celsius, in order to be reduced to complete ashes, which has been the case with many of the victims found. By comparison, cremating a human body is carried out at a temperature between 1,400 and 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, 982 degrees Celsius. They're still not explaining how people, the pain. How are people not screaming and waking up to this? Modern Spontaneous Human Combustion Cases Cases of SHC aren't simply the stuff of old wives' tales or confined strictly to books of antiquity. For instance, a more modern example took place in Ireland in 2010. The burned body of an elderly man was found lying in, uh, with his head near the fireplace of his apartment in a room that had virtually no fire damage. There were no burn marks on the floor, on the ceiling, directly above him, or anywhere else in the room. 
An Irish coroner would later rule that the spontaneous combustion was the case of the death of a 76-year-old Michael Faraday. Can you imagine being the coroner for that and having to like, you go through, you exhaust all the other conclusions and you're like, this was SH, this was SHC. And like your attendant's like, what's that? Spontaneous human combustion. Are you really going to type that down? I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine having to explain that to the family. Uh, how? What happened? Spontaneous human combustion. What's that? We're still working on it. <laughs> Another modern case of possible SHC occurred in 2017. The Independent reported that a 70-year-old man suddenly burst into flames in unexplained circumstances in a London street. Well, so much for it not happening in the street. The fire brigade's investigation found no evidence of an accelerant that would have spread the flames, and the man's death was treated as unexplained. Could this be another case of spontaneous human combustion? And this was during the day, and he wasn't asleep. Many people believe that there is much about the human body which makes it unique among earthly beings, and there are aspects of humans that are still unknown to us. One such feature is a phenomenon of spontaneous human combustion, which remains an un unsolved mystery. I mean, we only use 5% of our brains. Perhaps, maybe that's part of the case. Maybe, you know, I, I don't know. This is, just a, this is a funky one, guys. This is a funky one. And that concludes Spontaneous Human Combustion. I don't know what to tell you guys. Um, I still think it has to do something with, um, you know, if, if I still think it has to do something with like the universe and reality and something with people. I don't know. I don't I don't think it's the alcoholism thing. I mean, it, I don't know. I, I really don't know. This one truly has me bugged. I can't really pinpoint what I really believe or feel. Uh, all I got are just my little speculations on this one. But uh, I know the, the higher side chat, uh, great podcast, he did an episode with an investigator on spontaneous human combustion. Uh, so if you want more of a deeper dive, I highly recommend uh, you go check out that episode um, and perhaps maybe follow that individual's work in regards to this phenomenon. But yeah, I got nothing. I, I don't know what this really could be. I have my little, like I said, something with the, if we live in a, you know, program. You know, it could be something like a bug or a glitch. You know, maybe it really is something like that. And, and maybe it's not necessarily that we live in a computer program, but maybe it's a, a, a glitch, you know, a bug within reality, uh, within human beings. You know, we're, we're pretty mysterious in terms of our origins and what our capabilities are. So I, I highly recommend, you know, as I always say near the end to... Take that extra time and do your own research into this because you may be surprised what you uncover. But I, at the end, this is just another one of those weird things that I, I don't think anyone will have, ever get it figured out. Uh, and if they do, they're probably not going to tell us. <laughs> Although this would be a great show, wouldn't it be? If there was like a, a pandemic of just spontaneous human combustion going on around the world, <laughs> that would be quite the episodic show indeed. But, you know, we humans are fascinating things. The world that we live in is fascinating in and of itself. The mysteries that you know, will continue to be on earth and those that will never know. It's, it's quite, it's quite frustrating at times, but you can't lose hope. You can't give up. But with things like this, I don't know, everyone sleep with a fire blanket. <laughs> 
guess that's all I can say. Make sure your uh, your fire your fire alarms are prepped and ready. Sleep with a fire extinguisher in the bed, <laughs> or maybe sleep in a pool. <laughs> Be like those e girls on Twitch. Just you know, spend your 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 nights sleeping in a little pool. <laughs> Strap your head up so you don't drown. <laughs> Oh boy, spontaneous human combustion. What a wild world we live in. If you've made it this far, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And until next time, stay positive, stay focused, stay true, and much love.